That would be funny. That would be funny. Uh, We're talking about stuff that you can't hear. That's not even going to be on behind the scenes because it's offensive, rude, and just the kind of thing we talk about. About wieners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! Welcome back to our stupid reactions, idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you called us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. It's so sometimes you just show up for good British accent, well, sometimes. Yeah. <gasps> it's more Liverpool. Yeah. It's very Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> Insta tweet. <laughs> sure. You know where. And grammar. You've been there before. Yeah. You might have unsubscribed, you might have subscribed back. I don't Probably. know. Probably. I don't know what you do. And a uh, shout out to all the trolls out there. Yeah. Oh, now we've gone to Australia. And to our alien friends. Oh, yeah. Rest shout out to our alien friends. You're the reason we have our channel. <laughs> Aliens. Just to piss you off. Yeah. Uh, anyways, today we're doing a movie review. What? Yeah. I was supposed to watch a movie? <sighs> wow. You could, it's okay. You could do it real quick. Okay. Hold on. Uh, today we are reviewing Anyard Kashiap's. Done. Technically, second film. What? But first released film. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. I think they were made around the same time. His first film still has yet to be, to my knowledge, has yet to be released because of the censor board. Screw you, censor board. Yep. Um, but, and I believe when we talked to him, the original one was supposed to be five and a half hours. I think, I think that, if, from yeah. what my memory serves, if, if, if that's correct. I think you're right. Uh, but anyways, we're in Black Friday. Uh, I highly request it. It was actually a Patreon request. Uh, we do a poll on Patreon every month, and they, they pick a film. This was one of them. One of the benefits you get for going on to Patreon. Uh, so this was it, and this has been on the list uh, forever. <laughs> so we at least... Uh, we're coming into October. Yeah, I was going to say, basically, probably a year and a half. we started on your Akashia, basically. Yep. When we first got notice yeah, the, of him. The first directors we were immediately exposed to were Anya Akashia, Sanjay Lila Bansali, and Vishal Bardash. Those are the three right off the bat. And this was like right instant. So yeah. for all of you who've been waiting for us to watch this, thank you for patiently enduring. It's no joke, the memes about having to wait to the year 127 for us to get to your request. Yep, and you're still going to have to. Yep. Uh, but anyways, this is, uh, I believe, done on a shoestring budget. Like, less, probably less than a shoestring budget. Yeah. Um, like, and you probably funded it the way Quentin Tarantino funded his first film. It was like <laughs> rentals on credit cards and he only shot on the weekends. Yep, yep. Uh, and it's a film about the investigation that falls in 1993 uh, serial uh, Bombay Bomb Blast. Wow, that's, right. a, that's a lot of bees. That is. That's a, the so, Bombay Bomb Blasts. Uh, told Sounds like through, a band. Told through the different stories of the people involved, police, conspirators, victims, and middlemen. Right. Directed, written by Anyard Kashiap, um, and starring uh, a, thousand, yeah. a thousand people. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but the main people are K.K. Menon, mm -hmm. say his name. Pavan Malhotra. And, and then obviously there is an appearance there by the very young, very vibrant, very vivacious Nawazid and Sadiq. And of course, the legendary Ustaji Zakir Hussein. Yes. <laughs> we actually thought that when we did the trailer reaction to this. We saw his name and right. we thought it was our Zakir Hussein. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just some actor named Zakir Hussein. Yeah. But... We're dumb. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so this is going to be how much minutes for review. One, you all know about this event. Yes. I think everybody in India knows yeah. about this event. Right. And has probably, has probably seen film. the film. So, uh, 100 minutes for review. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, come back, and you're about to be spoiled. There you go. So, Rick, your initial thoughts. Um, I don't have a paragraph okay. because this is one of those where my personal take on it is my personal take. Mm -hmm. But I have an appreciation for the film based on where it falls in the landscape of Indian cinema, what he had to work with and how he had to work with it, mm -hmm. how much it changed Indian cinema, its, its place in that yeah. pantheon. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it never really grabbed me and held me in its, in its clutches Even at the throughout. beginning and the end? Yeah, the end it did. The yeah. last 30 minutes for me was by far the most engaging and captivating. And I thought the, the first 30 minutes and the last 30 minutes were, were definitely very engaging. Yeah, and the first, the first part of it was the, the last 30 minutes more. Yeah. I actually, the last 30 minutes, I started to think to myself, okay, this is what I was expecting. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, so, yeah, I, 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 especially in the middle, 
It's, I don't know, know what it is. Um, I think it, it was probably a bunch of things. One, we're not familiar with this event, which is actually one right. of the things I did love about it because I learned, I think, a bunch. Yes. Of, about what was going on with the bomb blast, about the, the, the riots. Right. Uh, and, and all that kind of I'm stuff. I'm looking at my notes from when I was watching. Uh, and so I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I, there was a bunch of stuff that I did really enjoy. Um, uh, especially, let's talk acting wise. I thought KK Manon did a phenomenal job uh, it, as the the, the uh, inspector. I thought a lot of the the and there was some good parts in the middle of the interrogation uh, parts with Nawaz and then a bunch of other people. Any time it was red, Ani Akashi, which we could talk about, uh, mm -hmm. which was interesting, um, used red for any interrogation. I right. thought uh, a lot of those scenes were really good and powerful. I thought he did really well as well. Mm -hmm. Say his name again. Uh, Pavan Malhotra. Who we've who seen we quite also, a bit. We've seen quite a bit of. In the Punjabi film. That was the in last in the, one. Bag Maka Bag. Yeah. Um, so we've seen him quite a few times now. He's a good actor. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought he did really well. Uh, obviously, Nawaz and his tiny little part did well. Obviously, we're not going to yep. talk about that one. He was, no. he, he was in it. Like, he for, was in it. Did a good for, job. For one scene. Yep. Um, but yeah. So I, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and I thought... God, I can't imagine what, one, what the budget was. <laughs> and then, like, being his first film. Right. And, like, he, I mean, obviously he'd worked with um, that other director, whatever his name was. From, uh, yeah, from Satya. Satya, yeah. Up, uh, probably a bunch of times uh, before this, but he was, like, I believe, writer or assistant director or assistant writer or something. So, being in his first film, basically, because his first one had yet to be released... I guarantee his budget was tiny, mm -hmm. and like he probably wasn't given very much time. Mm -hmm. Like so, for doing what he did with that amount, it was very, very impressive. And and when you consider the place that Indian cinema was at the time, mm -hmm. he is an absolute maverick. Someone who has his own sense of what he wants to do, why he wants to do it. He's not trying to be anyone. Mm -hmm. He's not catering to anything. He just simply said, I have a vision, this is what I'm doing. And if people watch it, that's gonna be great. Which we kind of, we know that based on what he has said in his interviews and we've heard about him. But when you look at what was being released in, this was 2004, I think, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at what was being released in Indian cinema. But I made it before that. Right, that's when yeah. it was released. Yeah. Um, you know, comparatively to what was going on in American cinema, there were films like Hotel Rwanda mm. came out that year, which so granted they had a lot more money, yeah. higher level technology. This looks like he got like a phone camera at the time. Yeah, he really at, did at a lot of time. But for me, and I think maybe it was because so many things were introduced at once. I don't know if it was script. I don't know if it was just because I got lost in it. I didn't feel connected to any characters enough to care about them mm. or even track with who was who. I got lost the, the with two a that lot I of the story. was K.K. Menon and pa Him, Pavin. Yeah, Pavin. those two, I knew who those guys were. That was pretty clear. Yeah. They basically functioned as our protagonist and our, and our and antagonist. antagonist. Yeah. But the other players, the main thing for there me, was a lot. there were a lot of them, and other than just your stereotypical like jihadist mindset, I didn't understand motivation for them. Yeah, and so it might have been different, obviously, because... Let's say they made a film about D-Day or 9-11 or whatever. We would know everything. Oh, we'd know everything. Yeah, like when we saw Saving Private Ryan, yeah. we knew what had happened. You knew the players. Four years up to that. And so <laughs> I'm assuming we, like, we know who, who was behind it. Right. And, and, so and that we already part, have an emotional investment in the story. Or like a story about Watergate. Right. Stuff like that. Already have an emotional so, investment. I'm assuming... And from what I've heard from Super Babies, if I was Indian and I was familiar with the yes. event, obviously it wouldn't be as confusing. And because I would you were like, more. okay, that's who that is. And I would care more. Yeah. And I'm not saying I didn't care about the fact that innocent people were being blown apart. I mean, that's a foregone conclusion. Yeah. That's awful. I thought when you consider, and probably my highest praise, besides it being groundbreaking for the day and Anurag being a maverick and had yeah. his own vision, is considering how clearly he was low budget. Mm -hmm. He took on a Herculean task to replicate that level of special effect. Yeah. And actually, and you could see what he was doing. Yeah. Closer shots, not wider shots, 
but still managed to make me believe that a lot of what I was seeing, and I do believe he it interspersed was very it. Documentary. documentary. Yeah. He actually interspersed actual news yeah. footage and news coverage. Yeah. So it, I, I tried to accept it more for like a documentary. Yeah. Um, it was definitely very documentary. Why? And so it'd be interesting to talk to him again. Uh, yeah. Um, obviously, just because he's an interesting person, but. <laughs> Uh, about this film uh, and, and and everything that went into it because, man, there was... To talk to him about, one, his ideas for using those different filters. Yeah. If it's red, it's an interrogation scene. Mm-hmm. If it's blue, it's um, a flashback. Mm-hmm. And, and when it's regular, it's, it's current time. Yeah. That's not done a lot. No, and it and definitely it, wasn't done back then. No. And so I'd love to talk to him about, like, what was your... What was your sport? Was it budgetary? Right. Was that, it accidental? Yeah. I it, just did that because that's what I could do. Yeah. Right. Like, I didn't have... There was no well, tricks I could have done. We do know that's the way he does his scenes in city streets. Like, if you see people running through the street chasing a criminal, those aren't background actors that they put in there. Yeah. They just let the actors run through the streets. Yeah. And captured it. And hopefully there's no cops around and say, where's your permit? Yeah. You know? So... Yeah, that's where, I, for me, it's a movie where, for my own personal aesthetic, it didn't grip me and make me be something that I would want to watch, but I can't deny the fact, I would call this an important film. It's telling yeah. about an important moment in Indian history. Especially if you're Indian. Yeah, you especially know about if you're it. Indian. Because, like, like I said, if I would love, one, I love that I learned stuff. Me too. As well, because I didn't, I didn't know anything. I, outside of, I knew yeah. there was a bomb blast. Right. And that's, that's all I knew. Uh, I I didn't know the connection with the the the, the Bombay riots right uh, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know that the, that whole connection right uh, with it. So that was all very very interesting. And the the final shots were just one phenomenal. The after the bomb blast and yeah, they really they zoomed in on the people that got hit. Very 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 good. powerful. Very very good. Uh, and so I loved that. Um, so I thought the a lot of the performances. Where it's Anya Kasha, he he just gets natural performances. There was nobody yeah, that was bad. N- no, no mistakes. There no. wasn't. While there wasn't anything for me that, that was like connected you, but they right. weren't bad. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't bad. There, there was, was nothing. It, it was actually there like, was nothing bad about the film. It was actually like a documentary. Very much. That's, it just felt like you were watching these no, n- normal people. I wish I could go equ- through their day life. I wish it I could insane. equate it to an American film where other people have said, "I freaking love that movie," and I'm like, oh, "I have one." What? Pulp Fiction. Oh. For me. Yeah, for you. Because A I, movie that everyone loves and you're like... It's, oh, it's actually very comparable because obviously we've seen quite a few of his work already. Yeah. And then we're going back to his first. Right. So he now has the budget, all the budget he wants. Right. And he's a more experienced director. Right. Same thing with Quentin Tarantino. I had seen almost all Quentin Tarantino films. And me then too. I watched Pulp Fiction. Right. And around, I, saw, I saw it early. Around two years ago. I think I watched Pulp Fiction for the first time. And I was like, okay, that's good. But I like his other stuff better. And you would yeah. when you look at it from the vantage point you got. But if you saw like at the beginning. Right. Like for us was... who saw it when it came out, mm-hmm. it means a whole lot more. That's a very good comparison. Yeah. And there's films where you either you saw it at a specific time or even it just didn't resonate. There's movies where someone will say to me, man, that's my favorite film. I don't feel it's my favorite film. Yeah. But I have no problem with that. It's your favorite film? I can see why that would be your... So, stupid babies who say, man, Black Friday, my favorite Andre Akasha film, I would not say I have a problem with that. I would just say I don't agree. It's definitely not on my list of favorite Andre Akasha films. Yeah. But, although, I did appreciate as well, with the, the limited budget he had, I would, I, I would love to know what the actual budget was. Yeah. To know, like... Because that would make it probably even more impressive because I bet it was, like, pathetic. I'd also like to know... <laughs> I'd, lo- I'd love to know what's on the editing floor. Oh, he, I, from what I remember in the interview, he said it was five and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, so that's a whole nother film. It just pains me. <laughs> the two things that also pain me. They, they censored this one too. Yeah, big time. <laughs> like, the, there was bleeps. Like, what? The two things that bother me, and I know you're preaching to the choir saying it yeah. too, about the artists being short-circuited is Mm -hmm. obviously censorship Mm -hmm. that's first and foremost but also not just from like the censorship board or the rating system which the censorship board is very different than the rating system we've talked about that before but uh studios studios who tell the director we don't want that and the director's like but 
Uh, and then over in the corner is the writer going, can I say something here? Yeah. You know, if anyone's really getting the shaft, it's the writers. And if you didn't know that, writers get the shaft the unless probably, you're the writer director. And they're probably the most important. And they're the most freaking important parts of you don't have the but film. That's without also the why he's so good because he's the writer. He's the writer. That's show. why. Yeah, that's mo why, why a lot of writers become directors because they know if they really want to have the control. And even then, if you're, you know, contractually obligated to studios, and, and if you're nobody like he was at the time, yeah, the studios and the producers are going to go, nope, yeah, we won't release it, like they did. But yep, that was it. Was actually probably more controversial censorship. Yeah, uh, with his first film, and I bet I'm betting this one. I think most of his films struggle with censorship. Pretty much everyone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of his films do. Yeah. But another thing I did appreciate about the film was the score for how minimal the film, like for how uh, minimal the budget was. Because one, it was very subtle, and but I thought it complemented it. Uh, yeah, pretty complimented well. It. Uh, but it was it was a very subtle score, uh, and I, I I did appreciate that for uh, for what it was. I thought the sound, like the um, sound mixing, for the bomb blasts. Yeah, that was good. For real, it was really good. It was get, for when like, you take into consideration, it costs money to do. Yeah, when you take into consideration the shoestring he was working with, there was nothing in the film that you're going to jump up and down about and say, "Man, yeah, the production, production design, wise, no. the art direction, the special effects." No, but when you consider the fact that this is so early in his career and he had so little to work with, there's there's far more to say. Man, this is an important film. It deserves to be in the list of the films that considered the important films in cinematic history for India. Um, but for, for me, like I think also for you, it's just like not one of my favorite on your films. Well, I would watch this before I would watch Deb D again. No? Interesting, I'd probably watch Deb D. You think so? Yeah, I would probably watch Deb D. I'd watch Deb Das before I'd watch any of them. I would not. Um, but I would, I would, of those two, yeah, I would watch, I like, I'd, I would say I think I liked Deb D a little bit more. I think that engaged me a little bit more than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, but he's, it's one of my favorite things about Anurag, I mean there's a lot of things obviously, but um, the fact that he just, he gets great performances out of all his actors, he, there's, outside of, the only time I can remember it was in Dev D, where I didn't like a, a, some of the performances in a film of his. Yeah. That's the only time I can think of it. So usually, and again, nothing you, blaring. Usually it's like this. Yeah. Where everybody is just, it's like a natural person on the street. Yeah. And I, from what I remember, this was the film that Nawaz, he, he wanted Nawaz for a bigger role, which is what he was saying. Yes. And Nawaz was like, I need a job. <laughs> Please yeah. give me a job. Please give me a job. <laughs> and so he was like, there's a small part. And he was like, of course, I'll take it because he's an actor. Right. Um, and so that, that's great. Uh, but I love that he loves great actors. Yeah, he's an artist. That's, and he he's always an gets a good performance, just like Fishal Bardwash always gets a good performance out of his actors. Yes. And a natural performance. And he's a cinephile. He's very similar to Quentin in that respect, mm -hmm. in that he adores the art form, has an encyclopedic mind and library of film. The, the number of films he knows and he's seen that it has inspired him. He's very much like Scorsese, these guys, and DiCaprio. These are people in the industry that come to mind immediately who adore film. Yeah. And that's pro that's my favorite thing about On Your Own. Yeah, yeah. But let us know what next of his films we should watch. Yes, uh, Gulal, I believe, is high on the list. It that's, is, I believe, with KK Menon as well. I think. Is it? I think. Uh, but we do need to explore KK Menon more. That is one of the actors I feel that is at the level of a Nawazuddin. Even though we've seen him, we saw him in Header. We saw him in. And this. we've seen a scene, you know, and we've heard. Yeah. But we haven't gotten to know him the way we've gotten to know. The first thing we saw him in was Header. Yeah. Uh, with Rachel Bardwash. Right. Um, but I feel like he's like the level of the Manoj and and Nawaz that we have just yet to fully explore. And I also want to know because we've really not, we we have, you know, we paid attention early on to Alia and Dipika and Priyanka. Um, a little bit of a sh Ashwari Rai, a little bit, but like the heavyweight female actor in India, the first comes to mind for me is Taboo. Yeah. And I want to know who else is out there right now that falls into that category of the heavyweight legendary right. female actor right. that we have not yet to explore. Oh, not yet. Yeah, that I, I really... I was going to say the other one, I could, Radhika. Uh, yeah. Is that her name from... Um... 
Sacred Games and that no yeah. Oscar. Yeah, but she doesn't, as far as I can tell, I love her. She's never done bad work. Yeah. Ridika Apke. Yeah. But, but, um, hasn't, like... Oh, she's not at the level, like, she's yeah, not taboo, like a As far as I know, Taboo is a legend. Yeah, she's a legend. Yeah. But she's also much younger. Right. <laughs> yeah, I want to know who are, because we talk, we talk consistently about, you know, Nawazuddin and KK Menon and the list goes on of the, the guys that we have seen. I really would love to know who are some of the... Other women that are the heavyweights, that not the are, not the star stars. No, no, no. The, but they like thespians. Thespians, like Irfan. Yes, style of and actress. She was a good. Uh, Radika was a good example. Yeah, because she's a great, great actor. As is she's much younger, but in the same category is is uh, Kalki. Yeah, and I think we've yet to see the best work. Right. I mean, she's young, but I think Tapsi Panu has a lot of. Oh yeah work ahead of her that's going to be really great. It's a lot of great work. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know in the next Anurag film because you know we're going to explore all of them. Yep. Let us know down below. <laughs> Dina